Welcome to Local Flavor. I'm Deborah Anderson and we've made it all the way to Great Bend this week and we're going to be talking to Kelly with Four Legs Up Barbecue. Tell us a little bit about Four Legs Up first of all. Well, Four Legs Up uh, Barbecue started as a barbecue competition team, uh, what, almost eight years ago. Um, did our first contest in Omaha, Nebraska in 2003. Uh, had so much fun, the kids had fun, we kind of started doing a little bit more of it. Um, started doing a little catering. So the first thing you're going to make for us today is brisket, yep. right? Yep. Okay. What do we need to start with? Uh, we'll start with the brisket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he might be. T um, I've been tasting the rubs while he was uh, not looking and they are awesome. So I'm anxious to see what he shares with us about the rubs. Um, <laughs> These are, the, these are actually the briskets we use for contests. Uh, these are... Uh, <laughs> it's very heavy. How many pounds briskets? is this? That's probably, I didn't weigh it, it's probably a 15 pound brisket. Um, <clears throat> oh, I feel kind of embarrassed. 15 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Muscle up, let's yeah. go. <laughs> um, if you're going to buy briskets, um, I don't know if you guys can see. Um, prime. If it's a prime brisket, which these are, it will say so USDA prime on the label, on the package. Mm -hmm. If it's a choice brisket, and I didn't get any in for this deal, uh, it will say USDA choice on it. And which is the best one? The prime's the best. And that means it's it has... It's at the top, the most marbling that you can basically get. Okay, because you want the fat marbled throughout yep, and not all That fat's the flavor. Shape. It's going to make, make it nice and moist and juicy and okay. ooh good. Um, choice is always good. Mm -hmm. Just probably doesn't have quite as much of the fat and the marbling in it. Uh, if it doesn't say USDA prime or uh, select or prime or choice on it, it's either it's a select or below, which means there's basically not a lot of fat in there. It's going to be a drier piece of meat when you're done with it, uh, less tasty because, again, the fat is flavor. Now, the brisket comes from the neck of the cow? The, actually, the front shoulder. Front shoulder? Yep. Okay. That's why we barbecue a brisket, low and slow. It's off that front part of the animal so it's good. that always work. Get, gets worked real hard. Okay. Uh, a lot of tough connective tissue in it. That's what we do with barbecue low and slow to break down all that tough connective tissue okay and melt that collagen that good really good stuff and yeah, we'll show and you that about, when we get the, and that's get really about out. the only way you hear of people eating brisket is barbecued it, yeah. it's about the only way you can yeah. cook it oh there's lots of ways of cooking it but that's the that's best way the only way, to do it. <laughs> yeah. good way. Um, got it now this is what we call a packer brisket and i'll show you some more of that when we get it out of the package um, if you're buying a brisket, look on the bottom side, the meat side, what we call it. See if you can see some fat in between the grains of the meat. The more of that white stuff you see, the better it is. More fat, better flavor. Always look for more of that fat. Um, check and make sure you see that one's got a cut in, the, in it right there. Mm -hmm. Just for home, it's probably not going to make much of a difference. But if we're doing barbecue contests with it, that's a no-no. Because that's right where we're going to take meat out to turn into the judges. Oh, so you don't want that we cut there. We don't want that. Okay. Right. So let's flip her over and we'll get it out of the package. Oh, you got and a nice gonna, knife there. We're going to go right to that trash can. Yeah. I want you to drop it. I have on an apron so I can get a little so blood on it. So you can get me. a little bit. Actually, <laughs> that's not blood. Oh, it isn't? Everybody always thinks it is. I did. <laughs> it's actually just red hemoglobin mixed in with the water. Okay. The moisture that's come out of the meat. Oh, I can't believe you saw that cut in there yep. through the package. That's, well, that after, is a cut. After four or five thousand briskets, we've probably worked on throughout the years. You get used to. Now, where did you get this brisket? I've never seen a package like this at the grocery store. You so you won't find primes at the grocery store. We run through meat suppliers to get all of our stuff. Uh -huh. um, 
see this is actually from Cashway uh, meat supplier out of Kent, out of Nebraska. Uh -huh. uh, Cisco we get meat from. Um, there are a few local stores. Um, I know in Hayes, some of the meat markets up there, there's a meat market here in Great Bend. Uh, if you work with them, they can probably get you some of the better cuts of brisket. Um, there's nothing wrong with the selects from some of the local grocery stores. Um, they're probably just not going to be as moist, as good a product as what I like to cook, especially for uh, barbecue contests. Yeah, if you want to win. If you want to win. That's, <laughs> it, it doesn't get any better than what you start with. Right. You know, just mm -hmm. like the old computer saying, junk in, junk out. So. Um, we'll start trimming that on the meat side down here. We'll take some of this fat off. And of course, a good sharp knife is always a must. Your, your knife looks really nice. I'm into kitchen gadgets, so I'm impressed with that one. Is it a fillet knife? This is actually a boning knife. Boning knife. Take that chunk of fat off right there. So you wanted a piece with all this fat, and now you're trimming yep. it all off. You want the stuff that's marbled through the meat, through not, the not meat. clumped on yep. it. We're going to get most of this white stuff right here, that silver skin, what they call it. Try uh -huh. to get most of that off. Because seasonings and smoke do not like going through fat or that silver skin. I'm not doing a very good job of trimming today. Some days you got it, some days you don't. Oh, I know someone at my house who has four legs, not up, still down, but she'd be <laughs> so upset that you're throwing these in the trash and not to her. <laughs> a lot of times I'll save this and make, uh, save the pieces we'll cut off mm -hmm. and um, just throw them in the cooker, cook them, and then... It would probably be good um, to throw in your beans and beans, stuff, too. Beans, bean meat, yep. Okay, and that's about all we're going to... I'd usually clean that up just a little bit more. Uh-huh. Um, but if you can see the white streaks in there, mm -hmm. that's that fat and that marbling that we're looking for. Excellent. Do we have to trim the other side, too? We'll trim the other side. Uh, one of the other things we're going to do, you notice the direction of the grain on this one? Yeah, this is an important yep. point that a lot of people miss. So Because when we're done, it's really important to slice the brisket across the grain. So that you don't have stringy pieces in exactly. your mouth. Exactly. So what we're going to do, it before we cook it, we're going to mark it over here, cut this little end off. Then when we're done cooking, now we have a starting place so you know where to start slicing right. as you go across Because the there. grain is going this way, and yep. you're going to want to cut perpendicular to that. We're going to start cutting that way. Yep. Good exactly. thinking. Exactly. That so it helps make it tender. Yep. Um, do we get anything else on here? Nope. Looks good. Are you going to trim all this off too? We're going to go down to about a quarter to an eighth of an inch of fat cover on the top. Remember, fat's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Well, most of it will kind of render away. It's going to render a lot of it off. That's why you have to have that bucket under your smoker. Yep. And we're looking pretty good. Nice way to f f kind of figure out where you're at is poke that. Should when I it put on a getting, glove and yep. poke it? When it starts getting real soft, that's when you know you're down to about the point where you want it. As compared to? As with when you start trimming the fat off, mm -hmm. fat's harder than the red meat. Yeah. So when you start getting that nice thin layer, that's it's going to start getting soft. I can feel the you. meat underneath yep. it. Yep. That's what you mean. That's what we're looking for. Awesome. Okay. Look at this big chunk. So we're just about basically done. Yep. And a lot of that up here, I don't mind too much. Now remember we talked about this is a packer brisket? Mm -hmm. Okay. With a packer brisket, there's what we call the flat here. 
flip that over. Remember the flat's here and the grain runs this direction? Mm -hmm. Well, right here, you see this fat seam? Yes. There's another piece of meat right up on top. Oh, so there's meat under this, so that's why you're not yep. trimming off just right there. There's a piece of meat right here, and then there's another fat seam, and then this piece. So when you're done, this will be a lot thicker right here than yep. down here. So, and we'll show you, and I've got, uh, when we're done, we'll separate these out, but just remember where this fat seam is, mm -hmm. and we'll show you what to do from there on out. Okay, that'll okay. be later. Yep. All right, I'll remember. And we're looking pretty good. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll take that over here. Flip that upside down on our foil. That is a Granton boning knife. It looked, it just looked very sharp. Yep, it's sharp. Do you sharpen it after each use too? Yep. Every time, every time you go to use it, we run it through the sharpener. <laughs> We're going to season with, lo and behold, Kelly's, Kelly's cow, cow dust. dust. <laughs> this is a seasoning we've developed over about eight years of uh, doing barbecue. You're putting it on really thick. Yep. You got a big piece of meat here. Mm -hmm. And what's the, the best thing in there? Or everything's probably important. It's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Most um, rubs have a sugar and a salt in them. Yep. Some garlic, onion. If you want to start with your own rub, mm -hmm. use equal parts sugar and salt, um, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and uh, chili powder. Equal of everything. Um, equal parts of the sugar and salt. Sugar and salt, a cup of sugar and a cup of salt. And if you want to use onion salt, garlic salt to get the onion and the salt, the garlic flavors. Mm -hmm. um, and then go down to about a quarter of a cup of all the rest of them. Okay. Just a kind of a nice general place to start. And then you can start tinkering from there. All right. This one looks really. It looks like it has a lot of herbs and things in it. Just a lot it of It looks really a flavorful. A lot of good stuff. So um, you used about a quarter of it yep. so far. And Where this, can, can people buy this or is this just for you? Uh, they can buy that. Uh, fourlegsupbbq.com. Fourlegsupbbq.com. And is the four a number four? Yep. Fourlegsupbbq.com. That will get you to our website. There's a contact page on our website email us and we can ship it out. Awesome. Notice I'm patting, not rubbing. Uh-huh. Well, you called it a rub. That's what the, the rest <laughs> of them call it. You call it a pat-on? Because when we put all that on there, what happens when you go to rub? You, you scrape you, it off a yep, little bit. Exactly. Now, some people will also put uh, some olive oil or something to get it to stick, but it looks like yours is sticking fine. It, it all sticks just fine. Okay. And you can. You can use a little bit of olive oil. Uh, there's a lot of recipes out there that call for squirting mustard, just French, old yellow French's mustard on there. I don't know about that. Um, which works fine because the mustard burns off in the cooker. Uh-huh. You won't ever taste it. Can Go I ahead. do it? Yep. You tell me if I'm putting on too much. Yeah. Oh, it smells really good. The spice is in there. Mmm. Smells super good. And you can see some green ones, so it's not yep. just salt and sugar. Is that too much? Right. Nope. You're keep going. Oh my. Cover well, this it, is the fat well. side, so it's yep. like. Oh. That's all right. Oh no. Now we now we can <laughs> now rub. rub it around. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually the rub we used when we won the uh, Jack Daniels World Invitational Barbecue Championship. What city? Lynchburg, Tennessee. I knew it was going to be in Tennessee. <laughs> That's awesome. So you won the Jack Daniels one. Did you have to yep. use Jack Daniels in the recipe? Nope. Good. Uh, I'm not that big of a fan of cooking with alcohol. I just soon drink it and then, okay. <laughs> then eat. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You basically have a brisket done and ready to go. You don't need to worry about the sides or anything? Nope. Okay. So what do we need to let it set? Normally I would let it set for an hour or two. 
Uh, if you want to let them set overnight, that's fine. We use um, half of it on this big 15 pound. Actually, I would probably use, th normally I would use probably th close to three quarter of that on there. Oh, I didn't use enough. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> um, but you're gonna let it set? We're gonna let it set. Okay. Uh, if you want to let it set overnight, you sure can. Just put it in, uh, on a tray, wrap it in foil, pop it in the fridge, okay. um, pull it back out in the morning and go straight on to the cooker with it. We'll go ahead and take this one out to the cooker. Okay, but normally and you would let it set at least an hour. Normally I would let it set for an hour um, and show you what we do with it to get it on the cooker. Now, have you already preheated the cooker for yep. us? Okay, and where we, what do you have it at? Uh, we're gonna run about 250. 250, so is yep. that a smoke level or a cooking level? Um, we're always cooking with wood, uh -huh. so we're always smoking. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a little break and put this on the grill. We're going to lay it in the cooker, kind of squish it up a little bit so it gets nice and big and fat. And now, let me ask you something, or you were going to say something, but I have not seen someone use the racks on top of the racks like that. What What do it, you do that for? Um, for briskets in these cookers, I find they work just a little bit better. Is it a little bit further from little, the heat? It's more up in where the actual heat and airflow is. Okay. Get it up off of the, uh, there's a grease tray down in there. Mm -hmm. uh, running 8, 10, 12 hours, there's enough radiant heat coming off the grease tray. If we just put it on the rack, we I tend to run a little issue with the bottom of the briskets burning. Okay. So as long as we raise you it up raise just it up a, little a little bit, bit, that solves all my problems. Oh, right. Well, that's a good good to know. There are hot areas of everyone's grill. Yep. You kind of learn where they are. You learn where they are and you use them to your advantage. Um, and I cook about 250, 260. If you're cooking at 225, you may not need to have those racks in there. And again, every cooker is a little bit different too. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. It's one of the things you got to get used to how your cooker cooks and what it does. So you have put that in there, no foil around it right nope. now. And how long are we going to leave this on? About six to seven hours. Okay, awesome. And then we'll pull it and let's go back in and we'll show you what so we're going to do the looks next like. step. Oh, this is what it looks like after six or seven hours. Yep. All right. I like the cart. These are heavy. All righty. Okay. So we have our brisket that's been in the cooker at 250 degrees for six uh, hours. about six hours. Okay. Yep. But we're not done, right? We're not done yet. Uh, briskets are about a three or four step process. What we're going to do is we're going to foil it, wrap it in foil. Mm -hmm. It's going to help keep our brisket moist, help keep the outside so it doesn't get really crusty, that nasty crust that you can't do anything with. Okay. And help us actually cook a little bit faster. Now, is this, uh, did you spray it with something, nope. or is this just some of the fat rendered just down? Just some of the fat that's rendered off of it, a little bit of the moisture coming from out, from inside of the meat coming out. Mm -hmm. And that's part of what we're trying to do with the foil, is save that moisture inside the brisket. And you have got something. We have a thermometer, a digital meat thermometer. And what is our target temperature? What we're looking for after about six to eight hours Remember that fat seam we talked about uh -huh. between the top piece and the bottom piece? That's probably where you're going to stick it. That's where we're going to put that meat thermometer. Because it's the thickest area, yep. the hardest to get to temp? Wait till our thermometer comes up. We should be about 160 to 170 degrees. Which means it's safe to eat, but still not good it's enough? It's still not done yet. Okay. 166, seven. So it How worked. You know? He's done this a lot. I've done this a time or two. <laughs> you bet. So one more thing we're going to do. Yep, we're going to leave that in there. Ah. From that 203 thing you were talking about uh -huh. over here. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to pour what I, one of the things I use is just a can of Campbell's beef broth, beef consomme. You can use apple juice if you want to, Simple about juice. a cup, cup mm -hmm. and a half. Uh, vegetable broth, uh, the possibilities are endless. Just a seasoned or flavored just broth? Just something to get a little bit of moisture in there. But you don't want just plain water? No. 
Okay. Why use plain water? Put something with some flavor in it. Mm -hmm. Never cook with just plain water. And I think for brisket beef, consomme is probably a good it's probably choice. going to be a pretty good bet. <laughs> so we have two layers on the bottom and two layers, layers on, on the, the top. top. Hundred and seventy three. I was okay. shooting for hundred and sixty to hundred and seventy. Well I probably talked too long before we yeah, took it that's off. All right. So <laughs> we're gonna leave that thermometer in there. We're gonna seal this foil up as tight as we can get it. Yeah, because you've got juice in there, so yep. you don't wanna lose it. Remember when you take stew meat from the store and make a stew out of it? Now, I don't remember that because I haven't done it, but... <laughs> you, you always, you, you put it in, or you put uh, roast in a crock pot, uh -huh. put the lid on it, that's what they call a braise. When you're cooking meat in a sealed environment with liquid, that's what they call a braise. Uh -huh. And what that does is that also helps break down the connective tissue and helps start melting that collagen in those tough pieces of meat. So it'll be a nice soft. So it'll be a nice and soft and moist and juicy. Awesome. We're gonna fold that up nice and tight. Take that back out to the cooker. When we get it back out there, we'll plug our thermometer back in again and let it run at 250 degrees. And we're gonna shoot for 203 degrees. So you are not changing a lot of temperature on your grill. Nope. You're just monitoring when it gets high enough yep. here. I love that you said 203, and that's what he was referring to earlier, that he's looking for in not just 200 or 205, he's getting to 203. And why do you make it so specific? That's where I know most generally they are done. That okay. doesn't necessarily mean it is done. And I'll show you that here in a minute with the one we've got done. To make sure that we've yep. got it done. Okay. Every piece cooks a little, just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So when it gets to 203, we're going to open that foil up and then start poking it to make sure it's nice and soft and tender. Very good. That's when the key thing when it's done. So this you're is not just checking kind of a to guideline. see if blood is coming out. You're checking right. to see if it's soft because that's when you've broken down enough yep. of that collagen. Exactly. All right. So we put you're it on. You're getting it. Well, I eat a lot. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's go put it on then. And we'll be. Uh, we'll be about two more hours. Okay. To get from 170 up to that 203, about 250 degrees. It's almost lunch time. It's almost lunch. Okay. We, we better hurry then. Yeah. <laughs>
And you don't want to take a raw food out and then put your cooked food back on it. So that's right. That's smart. And how many people have taken hamburgers out to the grill and put them back on the same plate when they're done? We ah. don't do that one either. No. <laughs> Actually, look, we're... that is more uh, liquid than you poured on from that can. Yep. It looks like so some more must have come out of the meat. Remember all that collagen thing we were talking mm -hmm. about? That's a lot. Turns to liquid. That's what we're looking for. So if we put this in the fridge, would it kind of gel up? Yep. <gasps> Disaster. That's why we have trash can. He knows where to put the trash can too. <laughs> but there. Probably all happened, huh? Yeah, you name it, it's happened. Mm, look at all that flavor we're yep. losing. Look at all that oh, flavor we're awesome. losing. I'll get it. I'll be in charge of this cleanup. It matches my ring, so it won't look bad. <laughs> now you put it in a different spot this time. That's just right where Is that. Am I supposed to notice that or no? Notice we pulled it about uh, 200 degrees, 203. <laughs> We're down to about 170 now. I love the 203 because I'll never forget that. But here you, you can feel this. With the with the probe. Yep. You're feel checking how soft to see if it's. Oh. It's that's, pudding. Yep. That's <laughs> about what we're looking for. There's a soft. There's a fatty spot I think right there. And it's still hot, so I'm going to put another pair of gloves on. Is it? Did it burn you? Nah, I'm used to it. This juice looks awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I trust you. It's soft. In fact, I think I poked it enough. I might have. It might be hard to slice. <laughs> slice now. <laughs> okay. Then, remember that uh, fat seam we talked about? Mm-hmm. Right here, between the two pieces of meat. Yeah. What we're gonna do is stick our hand in there, where it's nice and hot. Did it burn you? Yep. Yeah. Do you want your boning knife? Or are you just going to pull it? I think it's burning him. I don't want to help. I don't have any gloves on. <laughs> Where's the, what about your black gloves? That's what I'm going to grab right now. In case you don't have any at home, I think if you like to grill a lot, it's a good idea to have these. I'm assuming they're silicone or some sort of barbecue. Go to Orschlund's. They're uh, chemical gloves. Okay. But don't tell anybody I told you. Because they're not food grade? They're not food grade. <laughs> but get the black ones. The green ones don't hold up near as well. Mine are orange and they're silicone. Like, uh, you know, that's a big thing in cookware now, the silicone. The silicone stuff. I like it for spatulas. Spatulas. <laughs> I called it a spatula like I learned it. He said, not if you've been watching Paula Dean. Paula Dean calls them their spatulas. Spatulas. See that? What kind of Just, knife have you got this time? This is my good uh, slicing knife. Aww. So there was, it looked like a big hunk of fat, but there's a lot of meat in there's there. There's a lot of meat on there. We're actually going to set that over here and save that for a minute. We'll come back to it. Hot. It's still hot. You can clean some of that fat off underneath there. I'm going to get another pair of gloves on and we'll start slicing that thing. Okay. Now do you slice it in this liquid? What are you going to do with all this nope. liquid? Yeah, it's, we're still going to use it. It's oh. going to go back on top of it. At the end. We're going to uh, slice that and put it in a pan and then um, put that liquid back on top of it because that's what we call liquid love. Liquid love. <laughs> liquid love. Awesome. Liquid flavor, definitely, and it'll help keep it moist. She's done. Now Kay. you made a corner for us. So remember we did that. Uh, yeah, I can see the grain there. Yep. Remember we did that guide slice. Mm-hmm. That's right there is where that slice is. Right now you're glad you did it because yep. otherwise you can't see the grain because of all that seasoning. All that stuff. The good stuff. I now notice. I noticed. You we're going to turn it upside down. Uh huh. Depending on how much bark you have, if it's real crusty, 
It's always easier to put that crusty bark on the bottom, on the cutting board to give you something to cut against. Okay. So I always do what we call fat side up, mm -hmm. bark side down, and then we'll just come in here and start slicing. Is this the same brand of knives? Because these are awesome knives. Actually, this is a this is a Forstner slicing, 14 inch slicer knife. Look how it isn't pointy at the end. We're gonna get in here a little bit further. Is it staying together? Or did I if I it got, if we did, if I did my job right. Uh oh. We're gonna go for a slice about that thick. Mm hmm. And if we hang it on our finger, it should stay together. Good thing I didn't poke it too many times. That's right. It would have fallen apart, and if then we'd have, apart, then we'd have messed up the whole show. Can you also overcook it? Yep. This end down here will probably be a little bit overcooked. Look at that. Is it safe for you to eat on the show? Yes. Okay. It's very safe. That's why I took this job. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Mmm. Very good flavor. Super. It is not Sorry, tough guys. at all. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it is not tough at all. Do some people eat the fat? I usually peel it off. That's the best part. You know, it's not bad. And that's well. <laughs> that's where the flavor is. Mm -hmm. That's where the a lot of the smoke is. Mm -hmm. That's where all the seasoning is. Wow! I have always peeled it off. What have I been missing? All that good liquid love. You guys, this has got, it's like, it's like, it's like beef jerky that melts in your mouth. <laughs> Thanks. Is I'm that good? I'm really not sure how to take that, but <laughs> well, you know, we'll take jerky, it as good. Beef jerky is so delicious, but it's so much work. And this is like beef jerky pudding. <laughs> couch, couch potato beef jerky or something like that. Oh my God, so worth all the hours of cooking, I think. So do you think that, honestly, what makes it so tender is the hours of low temperature cooking? It's actually um, getting it to the right end temperature. Getting it to that, which is 203. Which, not necessarily. Oh. Remember we talked about that's <laughs> just the guideline of what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. But it's getting that thermometer out or a fork and poking poking it and making sure it's nice and soft and tender. It is. That's when it's done. It's super tender and so flavor. That rub is, because really all you put on it was yep. that rub and then some beef broth. Yep. Very That's good. It. I'm going to get some of that rub. So if someone got distracted during the show and they need to take their own barbecue class, uh, I heard you do barbecue classes too. We do classes. Uh, we do competition classes. Mm -hmm. If you want to get into barbecue contests, what I'll do, break here for a second, mm -hmm. cut them up in more bite-sized pieces, pull these ends off. <laughs> oh my gosh, that I'll end you thought was overcooked, I actually like it more. Is it possible that, that it's more delicious even though that at a competition they would say it was overcooked? Yeah, could be. And a lot of it's just what you like. This probably would be a hair overcooked if we were at a contest. Because it falls apart yep. so easy. Um, but now, it's still good eating. Mm -hmm. And notice that there's a little bit of red. I don't know if you can see it, but around the edge, I think that's from the smoke, isn't it? Where you see the red color? Or is that from the paprika? Nope. See the smoke ring mm -hmm. all the way down to here? That's I just do. from sitting in the cooker. Wow, that's a good one. That's what kind the flavor. of uh, wood did you put in with this one? Hickory and oak. Hickory and oak. Good question. Okay, well. Uh, and yes, we do con uh, classes. We'll do classes. Uh, we've got some backyard classes coming up, grill uh -huh. classes. Uh, now, do people sign up for those through a business or through you? I will. When we get those scheduled again this winter, we will run those on our website. Okay. So and four legs up barbecue bbq yep, bbq com. Oh, this is harder than I thought it was going to be. Not really. I'm just trying to make it too hard for myself. 
Oh, we got to do the burnt ends yet, too. Mm, maybe that's what I'm tasting. Did I already seal them all? And then we take that top piece, the piece we peeled off, mm -hmm. we're going to slice that again across the grain. Now, did you had you marked this one too, or you just can no. see the grain? I, yeah, you can see it from the other side. Now those do look a yeah. little fattier than yep. the other pieces. But that's the best part. Oh, it looks a lot fatty. I don't know. It might be too fatty. Kelly says this is the best part. And it is very good, but I like the little still like crumbs the other right one here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here, this was my piece. Don't mix it up with the others. I already touched this one. Yeah, this part does look like it has a lot more marbling through it. Mm, it is pretty and, good. And a lot of people that always complain about briskets, mm -hmm. because they're always tough, usually end up with <laughs> this piece, which is a little bit harder to cook. Um, well, this but, isn't tough at all. But by the same token, again, it's not, there's not a magic number on hours per pound that you cook it. I can't tell you to take a 15 pound brisket and cook it for nine hours and it'll be done. I know, and that's the big question everyone it's, has. It's all about when it's, when you start getting to that 203, you start poking it, when it gets soft, that's when it's done. Mm -hmm. Well, this is extremely tender, extremely tender. And the, the rub is outstanding. You did a good okay, job. Now on you got to try one more thing. Oh. <laughs> Remember that liquid love we put on there? Uh -huh. Now try it. Try it dipped in liquid love? Yep. Is this what a French dip sandwich is made of? Kind, it isn't. Kind of. Is it? Oh my God. <laughs> How can it be even better? I was already, I was already in love. <laughs> well, there's all kinds of ways yet. <laughs> this is just, this is just a simple brisket. little brisket, so. A simple brisket, so delicious. I think this is dangerous to have that big of a pan full. Are people surprising well, themselves how much they eat of it? Yep. <laughs> Probably not. Yes, too. they, yeah, they do. And I didn't touch these, so you can put them okay. in there if you need to, but. So delicious. Thank you so much. You bet. Hopefully I'll watch this over and over. Otherwise I'll have to take a class again. Okay. That sounds Does good. Does everyone get a taste it in class? Yep. Take the class. Just do it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us on Local Flavor. We have some more barbecue episodes coming up, so don't miss those.